हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू ईसी एकेडमी इन दिस लेक्चर लेट अस अंडरस्टैंड द क्लासिफिकेशन ऑफ सिग्नल्स अंडरस्टैंडिंग द टाइप ऑफ सिग्नल्स इज क्रूशियल फॉर डिटरमिनिंग द अप्रोप्रिएट मेथड्स फॉर एनालिसिस एंड प्रोसेसिंग सो द क्लासिफिकेशन ऑफ सिग्नल इज वेरी मच इंपॉर्टेंट सो दैट we can know the appropriate method for analysis and processing of the signal so classification of signals are very much important so what is the need of uh, classification of signals signal processing approaches vary based on signal type making classification a fundamental step so the processing of a signal will vary based on the type of the signal we use that's why the classification of signal is very much important and it is the first step in signal processing so to find what type of signal we are processing is the first step in signal processing so the signals can be classified based on characteristics such as dimensionality time domain and predictability so we can classify the signal based on dimensionality time domain as well as the predictability of the signal the first type of signal is multi channel and multi dimensional signals first let us understand what is multi channel signal a multi channel signal are produced by multiple source or multiple sensors so here if we say source a single source is known as a channel so if the signal is produced from multiple sources or multiple sensors which are known as multiple channel signal these signals can be represented as a vector so we can represent these signal in the form of a vector for example ecg signal that can be produced using three channel or 12 channels so ecg signal can be produced using three sources or 12 sources so we can say the ecg signal is a multi channel signal there is one more example of multi channel signal which is seismic data that is obtained or produced by multiple sensors the multi dimensional signal are the signals that vary across multiple dimensions so this signal varies across multiple dimensions for example if we take sound signal this sound is the function of only time that's why we can call this as one dimensional signal if we consider images it is the function of x and y which are spatial coordinates since the image is depending upon two coordinates or this image is function of x and y that's why it is known as a two dimensional signal we have color video which is the function of x y and time with three color channels which is red green and blue that's why it is known as three dimensional signal next is continuous time and discrete time signal a continuous time signal which is an analog signal can be defined at every possible time instant with an interval so a continuous time signal can be defined for all possible time instant and also this signal is having a time interval or a time period that will be repeating so you just remember the continuous time signal is also an analog signal that can be defined for all possible time instant every possible time instant for example sound wave the discrete time signal are defined only at specific points in time so this discrete time signal cannot be defined at every instant of time but they are defined only at specific point in time these signals are created through sampling of continuous time signal so if we sample the continuous time signal we'll get the discrete time signal 
For example, digital audio samples are discrete time signals. Now let us understand application of continuous time and discrete time signal. Continuous signals are used in analog systems. So generally these continuous time signals are used in analog signals while discrete signals are essential for digital processing. So for digital signal processing the discrete time signals are very much important. Next is continuous valued and discrete valued signal. In the continuous valued signal, the signal values can take any value within the range. So if we have the range of values, the signal can take any value within that range. For example, temperature readings, which is a continuous valued signal. In a discrete valued signal, the signal values are limited to specific level. So in discrete valued signal, the signal values are limited for specific level. Often these values are integer values. For example, digital signal with quantized level are a discrete valued signals. Now the digital signal processing requires signal to be both time and value discrete. So in digital signal processing, the signal should be discrete in both time as well as value. So this can be achieved by sampling and quantization. So sampling is done by taking samples of continuous time signal at a specific interval of time. Now let us understand what is quantization of digital signals. So here you need to remember that the digital signals are discrete in both time and amplitude. So these digital signals are discrete in time as well as along with its value or amplitude. So these signals are suitable for processing by digital systems. So always you need to remember the digital signals are used in digital systems for processing. So where the digital signals are discrete in both time as well as amplitude. The quantization is a process which converts continuous values into discrete values involving rounding or truncation to specific values. So here to get the discrete levels of signals, the quantization process involves rounding as well as truncation to specific values. So here you have understood sampling as well as quantization process. So sampling is a process where continuous time signal is sampled at a specific interval of time and quantization is a process that involves rounding and truncation to specific values so that we can have digital signals which are discrete in time as well as amplitude. For example, converting analog signal to digital format involves both sampling which is discrete in time and quantization which is discrete in values. So which means discrete in amplitude. So this is the difference between sampling and quantization which are very important for digital signals. Now let us understand deterministic and random signal. The deterministic signals are the signals that can be exactly described by mathematical functions or model. So the deterministic signals can be easily represented using mathematical functions or mathematical models. They are predictable at all time. So we can predict what kind of signal we will obtain at different interval of time. Such type of signals are known as deterministic signal. For example, we can take sinusoidal signal, which is a deterministic signal. A random signal are the signal that cannot be predicted precisely. So the signal that cannot be predicted are known as random signals. These signals are often analyzed using statistical methods. So to analyze the random signal, we'll use some statistical methods. 
For example, noise or stock price fluctuations are random signals. So noise signal is one of the best example of random signal. So here you need to remember the deterministic signal can be predicted at all time and random signal cannot be predicted precisely. So for analysis purpose, the deterministic signal uses direct mathematical models. So deterministic signals will use direct mathematical model for analysis of a signal. But the random signal uses probability and stochastic process. So random signal will use probability and stochastic processes for analyze the signal. Now let us understand some example and practical applications of different signals. The seismic monitoring involves multi-channel signal that captures multi-dimensional data to analyze wave propagation during earthquakes. So seismic monitoring involves multiple channels or multiple source signals that captures the multi-dimensional data to analyze wave propagation during earthquakes. In biomedical engineering, multi-channel ECG and EEG readings enables analysis of physiological signals for diagnostics. In biomedical engineering, we will use the multi-channel ECG and EEG reading for analysis of signal. Digital media which uses image and video processing that will depend on multi-dimensional signals for various applications. So this involves the streaming of images or video to medical images. So digital media uses the images and video processing that is a multi-dimensional signal. So finally, you need to remember that the signal classification is fundamental in signal processing. Different types of signals require unique analysis techniques. So each type of signal requires a different kind of analysis technique. The classification of signals helps in applications across the fields like medical diagnostics, environmental science and multimedia. The proper understanding of signal and system type enhances the design and effectiveness of signal processing system. So by understanding the type of signal and the type of system will help in designing the effectiveness of signal processing system. This is about classification of signals. Hope you have understood the topic. Thank you.